Maybe? Okay, there we go. There we go. Now the mic's hot. Well, my name is Grace, and as you heard, I am Miss Tennessee. I will give up my crown, actually, in just a few months. Um, but I am really excited to be here. First of all, I do want to apologize for my voice and my stuffy nose. I've been a little bit sick, um, but I am just pushing right through, and I'm excited to be here. Uh, you know, TED Talks are kind of what provided me encouragement every day and got me through my college years. Uh, so this is a very surreal moment for me to have the opportunity to be up here in this red carpet circle right now. Um, I want to talk to you guys about a few different things today. I want to start off with talking about something, a topic that I feel like we're all pretty familiar with, and that is stereotypes. Everybody know what a stereotype is? Yeah, I think it's kind of as humans in our DNA to judge a book by its cover. We judge people based on their race, their ethnicity, by titles that they hold, by their background, uh, by their socioeconomic um, association. We judge them. It's just natural. But I take on a lot of roles as Miss Tennessee. I do, and you heard just a few of them. You can Google and you'll see that I'm the spokesperson for character education. I am the Goodwill Ambassador for Children's Miracle Network across our state. I hold all of these titles, but when I came into the position of Miss Tennessee, I didn't realize all of the roles and responsibility that I would be taking on. Now, run one role that I chose uh, that I kind of put upon myself was that to strive to break down the stereotypes of pageantry of pageant girls. Because what do you think about when you hear Miss Tennessee? Or when you hear pageant girl, Miss America, anything? Anybody wanna suggest? What are, what are some things you hear? Some things you think. Maybe you think hair and makeup, right? Maybe you think wealthy family. Maybe you think spoiled brat. Maybe you think not very intelligent. Maybe you think mean girl. Maybe you think all of these things. Maybe you think self-obsessed. Well, it's my job, I feel like, as Miss Tennessee, to break down those stereotypes because I don't feel like any of those were true for me. Now, I didn't grow up competing in pageants. I also didn't grow up in a wealthy family. I am from right here in the Memphis area. I'm from Bartlett, Tennessee. Um, I am the middle sister of three girls. My father is a plumber. My mother is a nurse. At one point, my father tried to start his own business and failed, and we were um, going on just my mom's salary for a couple years. So I by no means came from a wealthy family. I'm very much middle class, homegrown girl. I went to Bartlett High School. Um, I was always very involved in high school, and it wasn't until I was in high school, my freshman or sophomore year, that I decided that I wanted to compete in a pageant. Now, I didn't want to compete in the pageant because of the fame that's associated with it. I wanted to compete in the pageant because of the job, the job that's associated with Miss Tennessee. Now, I told you guys about a few different roles that I take on um, and a couple that I didn't expect. Another one that I didn't expect to take on was the role of this mystical, magical, imaginary creature that lives in a child's brain. Sounds a little weird, right? But as my year as Miss Tennessee, I travel over 80,000 miles and speak to over 50,000 students about a character trait of my choice, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first of all, I want to tell you about how when I walk into a room as Grace, kids will listen to me. I have a passion for children. I love children. I'm not afraid to get down on my knees to play with them, to talk to them and make them feel comfortable. But when I walk in as Miss Tennessee, these kids see me as this magical fairy princess that they can tell anything to. They don't see me as Grace. They don't see me as an adult. They don't see me as a friend or a student, a fellow student, they see me as this magical imaginary figure. And I've learned to really play that up this year. Majority of the schools that I go into are low income schools. I don't know which kids are going home to foster families. I don't know which kids are going home to people who never tell them I love you or you're special or you're capable. I don't know if I'm going into a classroom with children who will go home and not have dinner or not wake up and eat breakfast in the morning. But when I walk in as Miss Tennessee, they listen to me. They're like sponges. They soak up everything that I say. There was actually a Miss Tennessee a couple years ago um, that went into a school and was getting to have some one-on-one -on -one time with the children. And a, I don't know if it was a little boy or a little girl, but they told her that they were being abused at home. They didn't choose to tell their teacher. They didn't choose to tell a classmate or a friend. This had been an ongoing situation, but they chose to tell Miss Tennessee. 
And I think a lot of times people don't realize the weight that comes along with this tool. This is my tool, my crown is my tool. I think a lot of times we think of Miss Tennessee and this crown as being superficial. And that's not true in my case. And that example of a child pouring out their heart to this, like I said, mystical creature of princess land, Miss Tennessee, it made a big difference in their life. I feel silly sometimes walking into a room full of adults in a crown and sash pretending to be a princess. I feel silly sometimes to think that I took off a full year of school and work and paused my life to be a princess for a year. But then I realized just how important this tool is in the lives of the children that I get to touch. And that's, that's what makes all the difference. And then all of that silliness in my mind, it goes away. Okay, so going back, I wanna to talk to you guys about what I speak to my kids on my school visits. Um, I speak to them about perseverance. I had to, the choice um, to choose any character trait that I wanted to focus on throughout my school tour, and I chose perseverance for a lot of reasons. In thinking, it kind of seemed like the most common theme throughout my life. So I set two goals for myself growing up. I set my first goal to go to college and to be able to graduate and not have thousands of dollars of loans and debt holding me down when I was trying to start my career. I knew that my parents wouldn't be able to afford to pay for me and both my sisters to go to a four-year university, so I made the most financially responsible decision to stay and go to the University of Memphis, which I do not regret. I'm proud to be a Tiger. Got any Tiger fans in here, by the way? There we go, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I did that because it was financially the most responsible thing to do for my family. I also sought out scholarship opportunities, and one of them was the Miss America organization. Throughout the three years that I've competed for Miss Tennessee and competing at Miss America, I've earned over $39,000 in scholarship money. So my school is paid for. That wasn't an easy road though. It wasn't an easy process. And when I set the goal to be Miss Tennessee, my second goal, I didn't expect it to be easy either. A lot of times people think it's all about having a nice dress and a semi-okay talent and a good body and that's how you win Miss Tennessee. But what they don't know is all of the community service work that goes into it. For seven years, I developed my platform of childhood literacy and worked hard. And I tried my best to live the job of Miss Tennessee on the local level because it is a job. It's a full-time job. Being Miss Tennessee is a full-time job, and a lot of people don't know that. So I worked really, really hard so that I could do my best to know the job, to be independent, to have an impressive resume for the judges, and I go my very first year at Miss Tennessee, and I didn't make the top 15. So what did I do? I picked myself back up, and I said, okay, you got this. So I worked harder than I'd ever thought in my, I had worked in my entire life and I came in first runner up my second year at Miss Tennessee. Now I want you to raise your hand if you have ever set a goal for yourself, worked really hard, felt like you did everything right and then fallen just short of it. Yeah, and if that hasn't happened to you, I promise you it will happen to you at some point in your life. Now I was very proud of myself, my family was proud of myself, proud of me for reaching that goal of first runner up, but I still felt like I failed because I didn't get what I sought out for. So from there, I made the decision after my parents told me that we probably wouldn't be able to afford it, that I should maybe take a year off. I wouldn't be able to buy a new wardrobe or anything like that because my sister was getting married. It was probably best for me to just sit out a year. But I said, no, I didn't want to sit out a year. I wanted to keep pushing. So I persevered. Every paycheck that I earned went to vocal lessons. I wore the exact same wardrobe that I wore the year before, which is a no-no in pageant land, just like it's a no-no to wear the same dress two years in a row to prom. But I broke that because it was something that it was important to me because of the job, because of the job, because of the chance and the opportunity to reach children all across our state. I pushed, I persevered, and my third year of competing, I was very, very blessed and honored to receive the job that I've been working so hard for, for seven years. I became Miss Tennessee. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is it. This is the easy part, now I just go on. No, this year I have learned more about myself than I thought that I ever could. I've also learned so much about our state and about 
all of the incredible people that are in our state. And I've also had the opportunity to share my story of perseverance with children across our state. Because I think it's important to have perseverance or what I like to call it grit. I think it's important to have grit. Whether you're three years old, 35 years old, or 95 years old. It's important that when you're setting goals for yourself, that you're working hard and you don't let people bring you down. So when I talk to kids of all ages, I made up an acronym for the word GRIT. I start with G. G stands for give it your all. In any situation that you're in, whether your goal is to make an A on a test or your goal is to grow up and be a rocket scientist, you don't wanna walk away and say, man, I wish I'd tried a little harder. So I encourage kids to give it your all, give it all your effort, no matter what. R stands for reach high. Okay, when we're younger, we have this mentality of invincibility that we can accomplish any goal that we want. We can grow up and be whatever we want, even if it isn't really possible. I know for a long time I wanted to grow up and be a superhero. You know, these are things that we really truly believe. And then as we get older, we kind of start to let reality weigh on us. And we don't think that we're capable of reaching those goals. But I don't think we should do that. I think that we should keep pushing. Dream big, reach high. I stands for ignore negative. Now I want you to raise your hand if you've ever been told that you're not smart enough, cool enough, pretty enough, fun enough, nice enough, strong enough to do something. Anyone been told that before? Yeah. People will continue to try and bring you down, but I think that we have a choice. We have a choice to believe what they say and stop believing in ourselves, or we have a choice to ignore them. So I encourage kids to ignore them. Ignore those negativity. T. T stands for try and try again. You know, I talked about getting this close to a goal, you do everything right and then you fall short. That's the easiest time to give up and walk away and find a new goal to reach. But I don't think you should. I don't think that we should be afraid of failure. I think that we should embrace failure because it makes you stronger. So when you feel like you failed, pick yourself back up and try again. Now, I learned that grit and perseverance were very prominent in my life. But throughout this year, speaking to children not pre-K children, all the way up to adults who are in their 80s. It's a common theme in their lives as well. And I think that any goal that you set for yourself, big or small, if you have perseverance and you have grit, you're capable of achieving it. Now, I believe in all of you. I really, really do. I believe in all of our children in Tennessee. And I think if you believe in yourself, and you ignore those negativities, you don't let other people drag you down, and you're persevere, you persevere through life's adversities, you can reach your goals. Thank you all so much for having me today.